nice invitation to uh, to come here and, and to speak speak to you about uh, about Russia. I we have already had uh, interesting, useful discussions this morning at the Irish Foreign Ministry. We spoke without break for three hours. I could, I think, we could have continued at least another three hours. So it shows that it is, it is uh, Russia is a fascinating, fascinating um, topic. Uh, my, my presentation, I have divided uh, that into three parts. First, I, I will deal with Russia as a, as a neighbor. Secondly, I will deal with Russia as our European partner. And uh, thirdly, briefly, Russia as, as a global actor or as a global uh, player. And Russia as a, a neighbor for Finland, I, I would say that we have a very multifaceted relationship with the, with, with the country. Our relationship, or, or let's say our management, uh, of our, our relations with Russia is, is based on our national interest. Um, we have been responding to the transition of Russia by supporting positive developments such, such as growth in trade and investments and services and by combating the negative phenomena. And our policy in Russia is based on a well-functioning bilateral relationship and also on Finland's membership in the, in the European uh, Union. Russia matters, and not only because of a common border of 1,300 uh, kilometers. Uh, we believe in, in engaging Russia, uh, and we have very intensive and wide cooperation with the Russian society. The more interaction, the better it is. Uh, whether we talk about uh, uh, political relationship, political visits, business community, NGO, civil society, etc. Between Finland and Russia, there are no political problems, but yes, indeed, we have practical problems and issues that need to be tackled. And um, I would say that it's quite normal that you have practical problems when you are neighbors and when you have very active uh, cooperation. Um, to illustrate the active uh, uh, relationship between Finland and Russia, I could give you a couple of figures. Um, for instance, uh, in 2010, there were 8.7 million border crossings between Finland and Russia. Finland issued close to 1 million Schengen visas to the Russian travelers and, and businessmen. And uh, Russians, I think, are the, the, the biggest group contributing to the services sector in Finland. Um, our economic cooperation is pretty active. The overall trade balance in 2010 was 13 billion euros. And to put that into context, the overall EU-Russia trade was 216 billion euros. USA-Russia trade is 60, was 16.6 billion euros in 2010. Uh, more than 600 Finnish uh, companies operating in Russia. Uh, for many Finnish companies, Russia is a very important, even though very challenging, market. Russian investment climate uh, needs a fair amount of improvement. Russian legislation is not as clear as one would wish that to, to be. Uh, we fully support uh, Russia's modernization, modernization uh, is, is, let's say, a relatively new keyword, catchword in the uh, EU-Russia relationship. Uh, we also signed our bilateral modernization partnership declaration with Russia a couple of uh, months ago. However, at the same time, we say that our long-term practical cooperation with Russia has been and is a, is a very concrete example of modernization that we have been doing with the country for many, many years already. What is very important in the modernization process is, of course, strengthening democracy and supporting civil society and rule of law. These are the fundamental uh, uh, stones in every society that wants to modernize itself. You can't simply modernize from top down, and you can't modernize if you don't have a, a proper foundation which is based on open society and rule of rule of law. Uh, Russia is taking steps into the right direction, I would say, 
but a, a fair amount still remains to be, to be done. Uh, I would like to take one concrete example between, uh, on cooperation between Russia and Finland and also between Russia and the other countries surrounding the Baltic Sea, and that is engaging Russia in cooperation on, on, in the Baltic Sea area. Uh, Baltic Sea is an inland sea, very shallow, uh, shallow, shallow waters and low in, in salt, surrounded by, by many countries who are active in agriculture and, and also uh, industrialized, uh, uh, lots of heavy, heavy industry along the, Baltic, uh, uh, along the Baltic shores. And that means that uh, the Baltic Sea is in constant environmental uh, risk. A new challenge is maritime traffic that has increased tremendously in the, in, in the Baltic Sea. Already now there are more than, more than 2,000 vessels that sail on the Baltic Sea on a daily basis. And uh, that is only going to increase in the future when Russia is, is, go, is increasing its, uh, its uh, uh, harbour and port capacity. And that also means increased uh, uh, oil transport. And uh, unfortunately, uh, according to the statistics, a, some oil spill disaster will happen sooner or, or later. And that means that we all have to be prepared for that. And that calls cooperation from all coastal countries, Russia included. We have to share responsibility for the Baltic Sea. And this is something where we have been calling for Russia for quite a long time. They, are, they have become more forthcoming and their commitment is, is getting stronger. And uh, we are very happy about that. And, um, and this is something I would like to emphasize as far as Russia is, is concerned, that there has to be, there has been, but there still has to be more change in the attitude. Uh, if, you, if you want to be a, a regional player, a global player, you have to, uh, you have to share and you have to, uh, you have to share information, you have to inform your partners, you have to tell what is going on. You simply cannot build a mega port in the, in the bottom Gulf of Finland without informing your neighbors on, on the impact, because it will have an impact on all, on all the neighboring countries, it will have an impact on the Baltic Sea, etc. And there, I can say that Russia, as I said, ha has become more and more forthcoming, but it has, it has taken, taken some time. Um, Russia, as a European partner, Russia is, is a strategic partner to the European Union and, and, and a major player in, in, in many areas. The EU-Russia relationship is not uncomplicated. We have a multifaceted network of cooperation with Russia. We have a partnership and cooperation agreement that we are now, now we're negotiating a, a new agreement. We have lots of meetings on different levels, starting from the summit meeting, which took place uh, last week. We have meetings between uh, different, um, uh, different ministers on civil servant level, human rights dialogue, political dialogue, you name it. Uh, Europe is the most important trading partner for Russia. 80% of the European uh, of, of foreign, inv in, of foreign investment in Russia is of European origin. In spite of that, the relationship is not an uncomplicated one. Uh, but it, 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 it is a relationship that has, has a, a future. Uh, for Russia, it has been difficult to understand what the European Union is, is all about, or at least they claim that they don't quite understand what we are. Sometimes I don't quite believe them. Uh, I think they do very well what we are, but they sort of want to use us to their, to their own purposes and benefits. And this is something we have to be very much aware of, and because what, uh, what makes European 27 member states uh, strong as the European Union is that we will share a, a, a same purpose and the same goal. We might get to the goal by different means, but if, if we share the same goal, it makes us a stronger partner uh, together as a, and a stronger negotiating partner with, uh, with, uh, with, 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 with Russia. I have always said that uh, Europe could be Russia's best friend if it would allow us to be the best friend, and it doesn't always allow that to happen. It's so much easier for Russia to somehow to look above Europe and straight into the United States. But this is a, a, a setup I, I would like to also to avoid. We are not competing with the United States on influence or anything, uh, and, and Russia should, should understand that. And uh, to <coughs> give you one example, how sort of a, a very practical example, how Russia sees the United States and, and, and Europe, and, and that has to do with the WTO accession uh, 
uh, talks, and that relates to the trade, trade figures I just mentioned. Uh, Medvedev and, and Obama, I think one of the telephone calls or meetings they had uh, last year, they sort of uh, uh, agreed that they would, uh, they would bring the bilateral uh, WTO accession talks between uh, Russia and the United States to the end, uh, by, by the by end of October. Fine. And then uh, uh, European Union and, and Russia, we also had our political discussion concerning WTO accession and, and said that we would try to bring the talks to an end by, by a certain date. Of course, at the same time, bearing in mind that, uh, that Russia has to fulfill the criteria before it, be it can become a, a full member. Russia, of course, has been telling us, see, it's so easy to agree with, the, agree with the United States. Why are we still having troubles with the, United, with the European Union? while negotiating WTO accession? The answer is very simple. When you look at the trade figures, it's very easy. With the United States, with 16.6 billion trade to say, let's agree, and uh, the nitty-gritty can be discussed somewhere else. For us, you know, having this uh, trade over 200 uh, billion euros uh, and energy issues, it's not so easy. I mean, uh, we really have to find solutions to the issues before, before Russia can join the WTO. Um, Ah, oh, yes. And the second issue that is, uh, I would like to uh, discuss a bit between the European Union and Russia is, the, is mobility, visa freedom, in other words. That's a political goal that we agreed in 2003. Um, complicated issue among, uh, among EU, Schengen countries, and, and Russia. Finally, in October last year, we agreed that we would agree on joint steps, you know, including common criteria that has to be fulfilled fulfilled by Russia and, and, and the European Union before we can, uh, we can launch to the uh, visa, freedom, uh, visa Freedom talks. Uh, so far, we have not been able to agree on the joint steps. There have been some dragging feet on, on, the, on, the, on the Russian side, as far as the criteria is concerned. And um, we simply can't make any, any progress before the agreement has been, has been, has, has, has been found. Uh, there will be some talks between the specialists uh, or the experts in the next few weeks to come, and we will then see where we are by September, uh, August, September, September this, this year. Um, for Russia, visa freedom is an important, uh, as I, 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 did, I say, sort of a psychological, psychopolitical issue. They find it very embarrassing that they still need a visa to come to the European uh, Union. Uh, but the only way to overcome this embarrassment is to put your own house in order, fulfill the criteria, and, uh, and uh, then only after that we can launch the, the talks and see where we, where we, uh, where we end, end up. An important area, also a difficult one, area of cooperation between EU and Russia is foreign and security policy. Um, Russia is needed on many issues. When we when we look at the uh, international uh, uh, cri when we look at the crisis and uh, and, and foreign policy foreign policy uh, issues, uh, good cooperation can can only succeed if there is mutual respect and trust in each other. There, we still have some way to go. Um, Russia always claims that uh, it's not an equal partner because it can't participate in the EU decision making. For us, the answer is very clear. Third, 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 third countries do not participate in the internal EU decision making, but that does not make them any lesser partners. There are ways how to cooperate and ways how to, uh, how to discuss and find, find solutions uh, together. We have had some success stories like cooperation in crisis management of the coast of Somalia and in Chad. We are, we are uh, finding uh, cooperation possibilities in, in emergency situations, etc., etc. But it, as I said, it takes, it takes trust and confidence from, from both, both, uh, both sides. Um, Russia, as, as a global actor, uh, Russia is, is a superpower. If we use the, uh, if, if we think 
Bear in mind that Russia is a member of the permanent member of the UN Security Council. Russia is also a nuclear nuclear power. And as I said, Russia is needed as a responsible partner and actor on, on the global global scene. Uh, but to be a sort of a responsible actor in the global scene means that you also have to be a member of the, of the relevant international and global organizations, and WTO is a very good, is a very good example. Russia is a proud member of G8, G20, uh, but as I always say, it's not enough to be a proud member. You also have to sort of prove your value and, and your the worthiness as a member and as a, a actor. Uh, the latest financial crisis, uh, I think they, they brought some realism into the Russian behavior. I remember when the financial crisis started and Prime Minister Putin was very proudly saying, ah, these crises do not affect us. We, we, can, cope, uh, we can cope our own. We, we, are, we are rich enough in, in, in natural resources, etc. It only took six to eight months, even less, they realized that they are not an isolated island, but they were hit by the crisis in the same way as other, other, other countries. Um, sounds like a cliche, but I mean, this is a pretty globalized world, and Russia, whether it wants or not, is very much part of the globalized world. What happens in this part of the world will have an impact on Russia sooner or, or later. And, and, and that, in due course, might, will bring change in the Russian behavior as, as well, in, in my opinion. Never be naive about Russia. You never know what there might be in, in the back pocket, but that doesn't mean that you should not try to, that you should not try to find ways of, of, of cooperation and, 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 uh, and bringing in Russia as, as a sort of actor on the global uh, scene.